Good start for Houston down two games to nothing. They're up four to nothing here in game three as we go to the fifth. And Joe Creedy is first up for the White Sox. And he takes a strike. So much has been made of all the calls that have been controversial this postseason. And more times than not, the White Sox have benefited from some of those calls. And again, Creedy's been a part of it. He's made the most of it. Here's a shot into deep right back at the wall. Another home run for Creedy. He puts the White Sox on the board, and it's 4-1 to one here in the fifth. No doubt about this home run to right. And for Joe, he gets his second of this World Series. Clearly a home run for Creedy, but the one before, after looking at countless replays between innings, there is not only doubt, but almost evidence that it was to the left of the yellow line and in play. So a leadoff home run by Creedy makes it a three-run game again, and here is Juan Uribe, who popped up his first time. He takes a strike from Oswald. First Creedy to put the Sox on the board. Pitches low to Uribe. One ball, one strike. You have to look closely at the ball that was hit by Lane to determine which side of the yellow line it hits. And I think our evidence shows on the replays that it hit to the left of that yellow line right there. And therefore should have still been in play. It was ruled a home run, and here's another look at it. It hits in the white area to the left of the line. Yep. Uribe is on with a base hit. Pitch was up from Oswald. Juan Uribe goes down to first with nobody out. You might be thinking uh, about a pinch hitter in this particular situation. There is no one warming in the White Sox bullpen. If it were the sixth inning or later, I think Ozzie Guillen would pinch hit. But now I think he'll leave Garland up there and try to bunt him over. Garland struck out his first time. Ball one. We saw 97 I think as high as 98 in the first inning from Oswald. But his fastball has consistently been at 94 since. A defensive bunt as Garland was just fighting it off and that's foul for strike one. John trying to bunt the ball down the first baseline because the first baseman is holding the runner on. Mike Lamb. Morgan Innsberg is so close to Garland, you can almost shake hands with him. Ozzie Guillen was just yelling out at Angel Hernandez that Oswald is not coming set. <laughs> you could hear somebody yelling in the background. It was Ozzie Guillen who was yelling out to Hernandez, who's the third base umpire, saying that Oswald is not coming to a complete stop. Now Ensberg is close enough to shake hands with Garland. And Garland misses it, strike two. Innsberg almost ends up near the first baseline. You'll you won't see a third baseman any closer than Innsberg is to Garland on that bunt attempt. There's Ozzy trying to alert Hernandez that Oswald isn't stopping. He's got, he's got a point. Oswald is coming awfully close to not giving it a full pause before he starts to the plate. Which makes it harder on that runner at first to get a jump. A leadoff home run by Creedy. A base hit by Uribe. And now Garland changes up and swings away and almost takes out Tim Raines. How about that showing bat control after only 12 career at bats. Squared around and almost hits the rock. Almost a piece of the rock there. <laughs> two and two. Garland strikes out. 
I'm telling you the Astros were one swing with good connection on the part of Garland from losing their cleanup hitter. If he pulls the ball toward Ensberg, you would have just seen his pair of shoes out there on the ground and Ensberg would have been laying down. He was 15 feet away from him. Yeah, I mean you have to consider the hitter and know that Garland doesn't have the bat control that most guys do and take a chance. Innsburg did and Garland strikes out. Better be pretty confident. Yep. On Sednick now. Takes a strike from Oswald. Three strikeouts tonight for the Houston right-hander. Two of them at the expense of John Garland. Four to one Houston. Top of the fifth. Oswald doesn't get it and bends down to fix the bottom of his pants out of frustration. Freedy has done his thing again. Check on your eBay. During the regular season, stole only four. Has won in this World Series. This would be a chance to run here if they feel good about doing it against Oswald Mossmus. Risky when you're down by three runs. But said Nick grounds a base hit through the right side. Uribe will hold at second. And it's two on with one out. And Aguchi coming up. Jim Hickey, the pitching coach of the Houston Astros. Well, Jim Hickey, we have been uh, sitting here with our jaws dropped open watching Oswald pitch because it seems the exact opposite of what he did against St. Louis in game six. He's gone more to the breaking ball tonight. Well, I, I don't know if my jaw has dropped open, but I'm a little bit surprised that he's, he's kind of gone this route right now. But I also wouldn't be surprised to see him turn it back toward the other way and go with a little bit more, uh, you know, hard stuff here. But, you know, I'm always preaching to him, too. If it's not broke, don't fix it. So, you know, right now it's not broke. So maybe he doesn't. Well, we were saying it just points out how talented a pitcher this guy is, that he can rear back and blow it by you, or he can get out uh, with pitches other than the fastball exactly I think he's one of the few guys in the National League and probably baseball in, in general that could pitch the entire ball game with a fastball you know and maybe just mixing in a change up or, or a slider here or there and he can also go the opposite route and throw a majority of all speed stuff with success also Jim thanks for your time all righty Gucci takes a strike on a 95 mile an hour fastball 0 and 1 with two on one out tying run at the plate for Chicago as they trail it four to one. With speed on Uribe and Ponsednik. One ball, one strike. Up to 72 pitches on the night for Oswald. Oswald would like to be the setup man tonight for Brad Lidge. A 1 1. Into center field, another hit. Uribe will come to the plate. The throw by Tavares is into the ground, and it's a two run game. Four hits in the inning, two runs, and it's two on with only one out, and die coming up. What a jump Uribe had at second base to score easily. Tavares throwing that ball, as you said, you're right into the ground. Do you know there's a reason? That Oswald is going away from the fastball. The reason is it doesn't have the electricity that it had last Wednesday against the Cardinals. They've determined that early, and he has been consistent with pitching so differently than he did last Wednesday. And Jim Hickey's out to talk about it. Many highlights from that game watching Oswald pitch. You saw that fastball almost riding up yeah. and into right-handed hitters, tying two holes up in the first inning. And when we talked to Phil Garner about it, he said, once we saw Oswald force Pujols into that type swing, we thought, we've got a real chance of ending this series right now. But tonight, the fastball looks different. And with two on, the tying runs aboard, one out. Here's Jermaine Dye. Talked about it a couple of innings ago that the White Sox had to feel 
like Oswald was gettable tonight. Strike one to die. It's that last foot or so of the fastball that isn't exploding from the right hand of Roy Oswald. And the White Sox have had good swings against him here in the fifth. One ball, one strike. Die is jammed, pops it up, and it's out of play for strike two. Think about this inning. Oswald has been hurt on pitches away in the strike zone. The home run by Creedy, the single by Aribe, the single by Petsednik, and then the single by Aguchi. All of them were away. So he tried to come back inside to die. Back in there, and it did not hit him. The count's two and two. Wasn't trying to hit him, but was certainly trying to come in off the plate, and he succeeded. How Dye got out of the way of that ball, I don't know. Runners on at first and second, one out, two balls, two strikes, and Dye gets out of there. If that ball, the pitch, hits any part of the uniform top of Dye, it's considered hit by the pitch. Last time they threw one in there, it hit his back. In game two. That's too far inside and it's a full count. I'll tell you the previous pitch looked like it caught part of the uniform top of Jermaine Dye. But this time he stays at the plate unlike game two. Trailing by two two runners on I think you send the runners. Trying to find out. Go back two pitches. Tough to say for sure, but it it didn't hit his uniform top. It came awfully close. Three balls, two strikes, two on, one out. Runners go, and Die shoots it foul. Osmus wanted it up. He got it up and die got it up but foul. Speed on the bases with Patsednik and Iguchi. Can go on deck. Runners go and die fouls another. Tell you Joe at the expense of holding the runner on. I think Biggio's giving too much of the right side up. I mean, Dye can hit the ball the other way. You're not going to throw to second base. Last two pitches, Jermaine Dye has come around with his backswing and clipped Osmus, who's popping up, hoping to get a chance to throw down to third and end the inning. The runners have taken off on the last two, three, two pitches. They go die into center field that ball is a hit and to score is pot said Nick and it's a one run game down toward the end of the bat and Jermaine die gives the White Sox their fifth hit of this inning. What an at bat by Jermaine die fastballs in driving him off the plate and finally a good slider from Oswald down out of the strike zone off the end of the bat to drive in the third White Sox run. Boy, that is terrific hitting by Dye. Nick Frank Thomas cheering down in that dugout for the White Sox, and Jermaine Dye, who we saw 
as a 22 year old rookie for the Braves in the World Series in 96 has made it a one run game. Now Canerco. Strike one. An eight pitch at bat and Jermaine Dye ends it with a base hit to center. Canerco tonight is doubled and fly to center field. Roy Oswald laboring here in the fifth and Canerco hits it to center. Tavares, Aguchi tags. They throw behind the runner and Tadahito gets back two out. Well, Tavares was giving Aguchi third base. Felt he was too deep. Aguchi with the fake break. The ball comes in behind him. He walked to third base. Tavares has got a good throwing arm, but he was going to second all the way, giving Aguchi third. It almost ended up throwing behind him. And Canerco frustrated with the at bat and then thinking maybe Aguchi would end up at third. Instead, it's first and second, two out for Pierzynski. He's walked twice. Feel the anxiety here in Houston, sensing vulnerability out of their best pitcher. Two on, two out. Pierzynski, ball one. Roy Oswalt, who won 20 games, lost 12, suffered only one five-hit inning all season. And the White Sox have put five hits together here in the fifth. And the tying run at second, the go-ahead run at first. Two out. Pierzynski in the air to center field. That ball is popped. This ball is up against the wall, and the White Sox are going to take the lead. In to score, Aguchi. In to score is Die, and Chicago is out in front. Five to four here in the fifth. Rush to the area in center field. They call it Towels Hill. And Krasinski puts the White Sox up for the first time tonight. Die scores easily. Too far to run for Tavares. Now Rowan, as the White Sox have batted around here in the fifth inning. It started on a home run by Creedy. The White Sox in this inning have put together six hits and five runs against Oswald. Runner at second, two out. Ball two on Aaron Rowan. The Astros in the bottom of this fifth will have the top of their lineup. Vigio, Tavares, and Berkman. Rowan hits it foul down the first baseline strike one. The Astros with a run in the first two in the third one in the fourth. Came into this fifth inning leading four to nothing with Oswalt rolling. Now they trail five four. The two one. Two and two. Full count.
Rowan three for nine in this series three two pitch. Another walk. That's four handed out by Roy Oswald. 37 pitches this inning and the Astros have to start thinking about getting action going in their bullpen. Not only four walks but a lot of deep counts. And Jim Hickey on cue. Calling the Astro bullpen. So now Oswalt will deal with Creedy who started this inning with a home run to right. Two on two out. Strike one. Four three two counts in this inning alone. We heard Jim Hickey say that he's always told his pitchers and Oswalt in particular if it isn't broke don't fix it. It broke here in the fifth. And he's trying to figure out a way to put it back together. With two on two out breaking ball is in for a strike it's 0 and 2. Lead runner here is Pierzynski. Trail runner is Rowan. And Ro Rowan is at first as we watch a replay of Creedy's home run to start this fifth. His fourth postseason home run. One two. Now Creedy's hit. And the bases are loaded. And the inning continues for your rebound. You can see Creedy looking out at Oswald. Oswald hit eight batsmen, and he does have a reputation of coming inside. It's all part of the game until you hit guys, but Creedy very upset. A home run to lead off the inning, and the tenth man to face Oswald, and he hits him. And now Jerry Lane, the home plate umpire, goes and points. Over at the White Sox bench, I think Carl Everett is down there screaming out at Oswald or over at Garner. And Garner's yelling back. Obviously, Oswald in that spot's not trying to hit Creedy to load the bases, two strikes on him, and Jerry Lane is trying to mediate this fight between the dugouts. So with that pitch the series has taken a different turn. It's Everett down there in the White Sox dugout. And this is after Creedy was hit by the pitch. And then the Astros dugout started yelling back. Here's a strike on the outside corner to your rebound. Bases loaded two out. Rebay singled and scored earlier this inning. Well, Springer is down there getting loose, but here's an 0 1 from Oswald. High and tight, 1 and 1. I know if you asked Oswald right now, he would say he's been getting squeezed tonight by the home plate umpire. Came into this series talking about. Now it could be a throwback series, a pitching dominated series. It has been anything but. Bases loaded, two out, and a strike on the outside corner, one and two, as Oswald gets a call. Now the crowd tries to climb back into it. Down the right field line, a ton of trouble if it's fair. It is a foul ball. Talk about a team adjusting to a pitcher. The White Sox in this inning, with a couple of at bats against Oswald earlier in the game, adjusting, and they have been hitting good pitches. That is a pitch right on the corner. But a rebay hits very well. Oswald staying with the breaking stuff, and the White Sox have adjusted to it. 
Bases loaded, two down, one two pitch. Popped into right center field, and Lane is there. The White Sox came into this inning down four runs to Roy Oswald. They come up with five in the fifth, have their first lead of the night. Five for Chicago after four and a half.